Hi Velma, I'm excited to read Saving Winslow with you, but first I'm gonna say hi to someone. I know that my students wanted to see him, so. Hi Henry. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> so, Henry's gonna listen right along with you. So today we're gonna read together chapter 36, He's Not a Dog. The warmer weather brought out more walkers and joggers. If Winslow was in sight, they would stop and gaze at the donkey. Aww, it's it, a, a donkey. Oh, the cutest thing ever. Winslow responded by braying, a variety of loud, ridiculous, squawking, honking, shrieking sounds. And then Mrs. Toby would call out, shut up, which would only make Winslow bray louder and more insistently. One day when Louie and his father were in the yard, an animal control officer arrived. The officer did not get out of his car. Instead, he lowered the window. He did not smile. Is it true you have a donkey on the premises? Is it out back? Complaints have been made. This neighborhood is not zoned for farm animals. The officer handed Louie's father a pamphlet outlining animal control regulations and a notice to remove the animal within seven days. Don't you even want to see Winslow? Louie asked. Winslow? The donkey. He's very friendly. I can see him from here. Donkey. I can hear him too. He's not even as big as some dogs. But he's not a dog. Louie's father said, we're working on it. The officer interrupted. You need to remove the animal within seven days. Is that clear? He did not wait for an answer. Chapter 37. Can he do that? Louie erupted. What? Can he do that? Can he order us to get rid of Winslow? Louie kicked at the driveway. Who makes those rules? What is the matter with people? Couldn't he at least have looked at Winslow? Wouldn't he, or wouldn't he have realized that he's not a nuisance? As if in protest, the baby next door cried and Winslow answered. You're up Mrs. Tooley opened her back door and called out, Shut that donkey up! Shut your baby up! Louie's father put his hand on Louie's shoulder. Now, now. I don't care! That screaming baby is a nuisance! Let's get rid of it! Oh, Louie. Oh, stupid people. I hate people. Louie. Chapter 38. You have a donkey? Later that same day, another car pulled up in front of Louie's house. A woman in a khaki-colored uniform stepped out and then reached back inside for a clipboard. Louie froze. Was it about Gus? She was as thin a person as Louie had ever seen. So thin, you could see the bones in her hollowed face. You could see all the tendons in her neck as she stretched it forward, eyeing the house and Louie. As she approached, Louie saw the badge on the pocket of her shirt. It read, Board of Health. Beneath that was a small photo of a skeletal woman's face and a name, Dolores. You live here? She asked. Her voice was crackly, as if it might disintegrate at any moment. Yes. Your parents home? Yes. Dolores checked her clipboard. You have a donkey? Yes. Dolores tapped her clipboard with a pen and shook her head. Can't have donkeys here. It's only a little one, no bigger than a dog. From the backyard, sensing the stranger, Winslow let out a loud, croaking, honking. Oh my, that sounds like a donkey, all right. Dolores started down the driveway toward Winslow's pen as he continued to bray loudly and obnoxiously. Can't have donkeys here, Dolores repeated. Health hazard. But he's very healthy, Louis said. Want to pet him? Oh no, no I do not. Health hazard. Her dark eyes were like tiny marbles set back in her eye sockets. Ticks, fleas, fungi, not to mention the bacteria and the feces. It was difficult to hear over Winslow's loud protests. In the what, Louis asked? In the feces, the, the poo? What is your procedure for dealing with the feces? You're up to onk, onk, onk. Winslow did not like this stranger. His mouth was right up against the fence, yelling at her. 
From next door came the sound of the crying baby and the unmistakable voice of Mrs. Tooley. Shut that thing up! Shut it up now! Ah, Dolores said, complaints. I need to speak to your parents. She turned to the house and knocked on the back door. Louis stayed outside as she spoke with his parents. Maybe she was only doing her job, he thought, but she didn't even seem to notice how cute Winslow was. She didn't know that he had struggled to survive, nor that he could be gentle and loving. She didn't notice that he had no ticks or fleas or fungi. She didn't care. Louis hoped he would never have a job like hers, but if he ever did, if he was forced to, or forced, say, to have a job like that, he would look the animal in the eye and he would kneel beside it and he would listen to the boy or the girl who was with the animal and he would never be cold or cruel or dismissive of that boy or girl or animal. So thanks for reading with me today um, and I believe Miss Humphreys will be reading the next couple chapters for you. See you tomorrow!